Whether you're a pro athlete, an exhausted parent, or you spend all day in an office chair, CBDMD wants to give you the support you need to make it through the day. CBD Freeze and Recover are an outstanding duo of topical products with specialized formulas to provide targeted relief where it matters most. And to make it even easier to try Freeze, Recover, and every other CBD MD product, you can take 25% off your next order when you use the promo code NBA at checkout. Once again, that's cbdmd.com. The promo code is NBA for 25% off your purchase of superior CBD products from CBDMD. In today's show, we're recapping Thursday's action and previewing 11 games for Friday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today, we're looking at the five games from Thursday across the league. We're looking briefly at the 11 games for Friday as well. Let's start by talking about those games On Thursday, the first one of those, the Miami Heat knock off the Houston Rockets 101-94. Tyler Hero was a very late scratch due to COVID protocols. Um, Basically, just as tip-off was about to be there, he was out. So we had Kendrick Nunn play 41 minutes. 16 points, 5 rebounds, and in a real... uh, A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. He had 4 steals as well. Now, he shot horribly. And I don't think he's going to have any sort of sizable role in the rotation once Hero, Dragic, and Bradley all return. But for now, he's a 12-team league player. Jim Butler had a triple-double, 27-10-10. and 10. Because he's my butler. And Adebayo, just the 10 points, but 13 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals. With another very good free-throw shooting night from Adebayo. Max Struess, 25 points, 21 minutes, 5 threes. That's a very Bryn Forbes-esque line because he had no other stats at all. But Struess has shown an ability when he has to come out and pinch hit to be useful. And he was that again. 31 minutes once again for Kelly Linick. He's trending up. I don't mind him as a 12-team ad. Six points, 13 rebounds, two blocks and two threes. Well, Dunk Robinson did his thing. Bryn Forbes, he had 15 points with five threes. He did nothing else. And honestly, he, you should be treating him like Bryn Forbes at this point. He's not a must-roster guy in my uh, opinion. Yeah, that's the word. But the uh, Rockets. I told you we should at least persist with DeMarcus Cousins. 25 minutes. 16 and 11, three threes. He's fine, short-term, 12-team leagues. He has no value beyond Christian Wood's injury, so he is not a long-term guy. You have him for now, and that's it. Big game from Jay Sean Tate. I guess it does help that PJ Tucker and Victor Oladipo both had to leave with injuries here, but Tate played 35 minutes, had 16 and 7 with a steal. Great shooting again. He's been shooting highly efficiently this year. He's 105th-ranked player over the last two weeks. He had 30 fantasy points here. I like him more in category leagues and points leagues. But he is a 12-team league stream guy for now. Eric Gordon, 17 points and 24 fantasy points in 31 minutes. And he continues to be okay. I'm just, I can't get excited about him at all. Well, Johnny Wall had 17, 6, and 7 in 36 minutes. Poor shooting from both Gordon and Wall, under 40%. Tucker had 8 points, which is actually a lot for him. While Oladipo continues to be, honestly, horrible. 6 points in 20 minutes and then hurt his foot. You would imagine there's going to be some more time off for Victor Oladipo. He's not a drop, but... He's not that far off, to be honest. Uh, he, I think he's more of a guy we look at as a 70 to 90 range player. But he is struggling in a very, very big way. With him out, I'd be interested in streaming. That helps Tate. Now, Oladipo will miss some time, I'm pretty sure. Helps Tate. But deeper leagues, you want to look at Sterling Brown, who had another seven rebounds and three assists in 25 minutes. Normally, he's good for two steals as well. He also usually shoots better than 17%. Those are all the depot numbers. He's normally a better shooter than that. So he's an interesting deeper league stream that he's rostered basically nowhere. So just keep an eye on uh, on old Sterlo and uh, and see what he can bring for you maybe in those deeper leagues. If we do here, that Oladipo is out. The next game, we take a look at the Boston Celtics. They beat the Raptors easily, 120-106. Let's start with Toronto. Lowry had 24 points in 33 minutes with six assists. Shot 67% from the field. A very, very good game from him. While the wiki Chris Boucher had some foul trouble, five fouls, but 25 minutes, 12 points, five blocks, six rebounds, two threes. 
We're getting his value really starting to stabilize now. It's going to be an up and down scenario for him for sure. I think we're trending more towards more minutes in general, um, but looking pretty good. Siakam, 23 points, not his best night, but not terrible. While Van Vliet was bad in terms of shooting, but he just fills it up in other areas. Five points on 22% is horrendous, but three rebounds, 11 assists, two steals, and two blocks. Somehow still had 34 fantasy points, which is more than Pascal Siakam, despite scoring just five points. 21 minutes for Baines, and it is starting to look more and more like they'll just get rid of Baines, and they'll just start Siakam at center, and then run Powell and Ananobi and, uh, and and Lowry and Van Vliet go super small and then run Boucher and really limit Baines' minutes. I think that's starting to happen. Baines is only a 50-team league guy. He's not any any value at all in fantasy leagues. While Powell, he'd been shooting absolute lights out. He didn't do that here. 15 points in a very empty line. 15 shots as well. 0 3, 0 assists, 0 steals, 0 blocks. He's a guy to hold. He's also a guy to sell absolutely high. Um, but that's really about it for him. Um I think they might keep him in the starting lineup. I think they might. I'm not sure about that, though. The Celtics. No Marcus Smart, no Rob Williams. Interestingly, Jeff Teague out of the rotation. I called that, knew it was going to happen, and here we are. They moved Shemi Ojale into the starting lineup. Now, I'm not here to say that... Um, you know, I, I thought they should have started Grant Williams, so I'm not I'm not, you know, talking about how good I was with picking Shemi Ojale because I didn't like that move. But getting rid of the Thompson-Tice front court is a big win. Ojale was amazing. 24 points with six threes and six rebounds. Now, he's never going to be this good ever again, but it was good to see him out there and improving the way that he has. While well, Peyton Pritchard, 29 minutes. I think Pritchard starts on Friday. I think it's an excellent stream for Friday. 29 minutes, 20 points, six triples. Not much else, but he was good. Jalen Brown, just horrendous shooting. 21%, 12 points, five rebounds, 10 assists, two steals, and a block. I hope it's not the beginning of a cold streak because regression was always coming and it came hard here. Uh, where is it? Giggity! Jason Tatum, only 17 points on 39%. It's not great, but he had nine assists and two steals. And Kemba Walker, finally, a night that was solid. 21 points, five rebounds, three assists. It's not spectacular, but it's solid. 42% shooting. He will sit out tomorrow, almost as sh- not as sh- almost surely. He will sit out tomorrow, while only 19 minutes for Tristan Thompson, who's still rostered in 12-team leagues in some spots. Guys, what are you doing? He's the 270th ranked player. Surely that name doesn't mean enough that you've got to roster Tristan Thompson. Like, get him as... Who I don't even know which Raptors announcer is. The bloke that always says, get that garbage out of here. Like, that's exactly what you need to do. I need to get that drop. Is it is it Jack? Yeah, it's Jack, isn't it? I'm getting that drop in here because Tristan Thompson, I'm going to do the voice, get ready to be embarrassed. Get that garbage out of here! Oh my God, my voice is so crackly. Holy shit, I didn't realize it was so bad. <clears throat> I apologize for assaulting you in that way. Uh, Daniel Tice, 27 minutes, 8 points, 2 steals, 4 blocks. He is a 12-team league center. Amazingly. So it's not amazing. Well, that's not true. This is amazing. It's it's. Let's start that again. Bet online is amazing. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Football's over. Some of us might be celebrating that. The NBA, college basketball, and the NHL are in full swing. Bet online even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. Bet online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. And when you do, you will will get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using our promo code LOCKEDON. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. We're covering everything you need to know about fantasy basketball. What about the rest of sports? Now the Locked On Podcast Network has you covered there as well with Locked On Today. It's hosted by the great Peter Bukowski and it's all the sports news you need every morning in under 20 minutes. Subscribe to the Locked On Day Today podcast wherever you get podcasts. Next game, the Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons. I talked about this on the pregame show. The Pacers were a minus two in this game. It made no sense at all. And shout out to the bloke Venomous Teddy, I think his name was, on the live stream that said, I'm just going to put money on the Pacers to win. It was the absolute biggest no-brainer bet play of the day, and they won by 16 points. No one is surprised by that. That was just an insane line by Vegas. What the hell was that? The Pacers won 11, the Pistons 95. DeMontis Sabonis had his way, 38 minutes, 26, 8, and 8. Three steals and two blocks. That's two games in a row where the big fella has racked up defensive stats. So that means he'll probably go three weeks before getting a single block. Jeremy Lamb moved to the bench because he had been horrendous. And then he came off the bench, and he was really good. 28 minutes, 17 points, 5 rebounds, 3 threes, and 2 steals. But a word of caution. 
He missed one shot, 86% shooting. That is not real. The two steals are nice, but low usage and insane. He had a, His true shooting was 108%. He won't be that good. I think he's more of a fringe 12 team than a must roster 12 team. Timothy John McConnell, guess what he did? He had assists and steals. 7 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals and a block while Miles Turner. The minutes just keep going down for this guy. He had some foul trouble here for sure, but 14 and 8 with 2 blocks. Uh, hopefully you're able to sell a little bit high on him. I think he's a bit of a buy low at the moment. While Brogdon had 18 and 9 and Justin Holiday 11 points, 4 assists and 2 threes. Another solid night. They started Doug McDirt over um, Lamb. McDermott was alright. 9 points in 30 minutes, but he's just a deeper league player. While they took Goga Badadze out of the rotation, which is entirely frustrating for me because I've been happy with how he's been playing and you know that I do like him long term. The Pistons, just before the game, randomly go, oh, by the way, Mason Plumlee's inactive. And I go, what? 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 And people were freaking out. Is it a trade? What's going on? Turns out he had elbow bursitis. They didn't think to tell us that. They just said he's inactive. Oh, cool. Elbow bursitis is a swelling of a sack in the elbow. Giggity. Uh, I had it once in my ankle. And I tell you what, friggin' hurt. It hurt so bad. And then you just got to wait for that to come down. So it's not a long-term thing. But Isaiah Stewart started. He played 31 minutes. He had 17 and 7 going up against Turner and Sabonis. He had two steals and a block on 89% shooting. If I was Dwayne Casey, I'd be a bad NBA coach, but if I was Dwayne Casey, I would be reticent to just move Stewart straight out of that starting lineup. At the very least, I would institute a minute split. And I think at some point, Stewart is going to take over this job. We don't know how long Plumlee's out. So for the short time, add Stewart, as I said on the pregame today, add him, and let's just see what happens over the next four to five days. Let's just see what happens. I think you've got to add Josh Jackson, 18 and 8, 24 minutes. And finally, a good game from Blake Griffin. If you can get any top 120 player back in a trade for Blake Griffin, you do it. 16, 3 and 6, do not count on that. Shit night from Jeremy Grant, nine points in 36 minutes on 24%, but build it up. Five rebounds, three assists, two steals, and a block. 25 fantasy points. We'll, uh, we'll let him have a dud night uh, here and there. But he, his numbers have actually dropped off a bit. 56 ranked player over the last two weeks. Talked about Dillon Wright not being the offensive force that he was last game. He had six points here. He still had five rebounds, three assists, and two blocks. And he's a 12-team roster or player. But yeah, he was going to fall off. Or well, Dennis Smith, he played. That's probably the biggest positive I can give you. People added him in 12-team leagues. Like, guys, I don't know exactly what to say. But I don't know what's blocking your eyes. Unless it's just Dennis Smith's massive wood slanging. Something's in the way because he is not a 12-team league guy. Drop him. Uh, deep leagues, sure. Sadiq Bey had 10 points in 18 minutes while Siku Dumbaya played as the backup center and had 6-6. Six and six. Now, for their game on Friday, Griffin's going to sit. So we're going to get more Bay. We're going to get more Dumbaya. We might get big, big Stewart minutes. It's going to be real interesting to see exactly what the Detroit Pistons do in that one. All right, let's go on to the next game now. The Golden State Warriors beat the Orlando Magic 111-105. The Magic were without um, Aaron Gordon, Michael Carter-Williams, Evan Fournier, Cole Anthony, who, of course, was in turn replacing Markel Fultz. So Frank Mason started, and then four minutes into the game, he went out for the game, straining his groin. What the hell this team does on Friday remains to be seen. They could be starting Terrence Ross as their starting point guard, as they did in the second half here. Ross played 41 minutes. He had 20 points, three blocks, six rebounds, three assists. He's available in leagues. Go and add him. I don't know why he's available in as many leagues as he is, but he shouldn't be. Nick Vucevic played 38 minutes, 25, 13, and five. Uh, shot really horribly, but there's just big volume there. Well, Jimmy Ennis, 39 minutes, 17 and 10, three threes, two steals. I've been an Ennis fan for a while, but I think this is unrealistic for him. Of course, it is coming without Mason, Gordon, Carter Williams, Aminu, Fournier, and Anthony, all guys who will be part of the rotation eventually. Ennis will be a starter, I think, long-term, but that level of production is not uh, not something that we're going to see all that much. And Dwayne Bacon also played well. 20 points, four threes, three steals. But again, this is a guy that might not even be in the rotation as we move forward. I would be okay with streaming those guys in, especially if we do hear Mason is out for Friday's games. I loved what I saw from Chumura Kiki. 35 minutes. Now, only nine points. I'd like to see more from him offensively. Three threes. Five rebounds, five assists, one steal. He was a plus eight. He just looks really good out there. He should 100% be starting over Gary Clark every day of the week. I think it's coming very, very soon. In fact, I think it's coming tomorrow. And Akiki is an ad in 14 team leagues. 
Um, of course, when Aaron Gordon returns, his minutes are going to be reduced. But I'd like to see them throw them, him in there and start him even over James Ennis. There's no real need for Ennis to be a permanent starter on this team. Now, the shooting with Gordon and Akiki would be pretty rough. And maybe that's a reason to put Ennis in there. But I just like what he's developing at the moment. So a nice deeper league ad. Gary Clark had two points in his 16 minutes. While Mo Bamba played only seven minutes. He was a plus 18, but the, he is that far out of their calculations that they had no players available. And granted, you know, Vooch and Birch are their two centers, and they were both there, but the Bumba just didn't play. Seven minutes is a very, very small amount of playing time for a, a guy that they invested the number six pick in all those years ago. And by all those years, I mean like three years ago, and now they just don't play him. It is absolutely troubling. Let's talk Steph Curry, because he's really bloody good. 40 points. 37 minutes, 10 triples, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, 4 steals, 54% shooting. He is the number 5 ranked player this year. I think he will finish higher than that. I think he's going to be a top 4 guy. To me, he was a clear top 5 pick in drafts heading into the season. He has rewarded that um, risk, if you want to say it that way, that some people thought it was taking him there. He's just been awesome. Andy Wiggins is pretty good here. 21 points, three blocks, two triples. His block rate way up this year. He was efficient. He had 62% shooting. He's inside the top 100 this season, which we haven't really seen a top 100 uh, Wiggins season for a while. So good numbers there from Wiggins. Well, Oubre was solid again. 17 and 10 with three threes. A top 100 player over the last two weeks. He's starting to settle in, even though there's going to be some, um, it's going to be some bad games. Didn't get Draymond Green to double figures. He was at eight points before the fourth quarter began. He finished on eight points, but he had 11 boards. He blocked two shots. He had a steal. And when I was talking about Draymond weeks ago, saying, look, if you believe Draymond Green's the guy that has two block shots through every 11 games, then he's a drop. If you think he's going to go back to being someone who's good defensively, then you hold on. Well, we've seen the blocks come back. The assists are sky high. He's a top 50 player over the last two weeks and should be rostered in all leagues. Toscano Anderson started. And by the way, James Wiseman is going to be out another week to 10 days. So just remember that. Toscano Anderson started only 21 minutes, but a nice triple one with nine points while Michael Mulder started the second half at 11 points with three threes. Mulder's just a deeper league guy. And Toscano Anderson has some stream value while Looney and Wiseman are both sidelined. But this was not one of his best nights, although the overall numbers, I think, from Toscano Anderson are solid. He was a plus 11 in that time. They just need to get a little bit more shooting out there with Mulder. But one is... Absolutely someone we can look at as a 12-team streamer. He is a top 100 player over the last two weeks. Bill Barr's the number one player over the last however long they've been sponsoring this show. They are absolutely delicious. They are putting together yeah, just a great, a great selection of flavors. The best tasting protein bar ever, some may say, including me. They have got some new ones. The Cookie Dough Chunk Bilt Bar. Remember that one? If you haven't tried it, you you missed out. But now they've got a new one. Coconut brownie chunk. It's got dark chocolate. It's got coconut and real brownie chunks. It does not get any better. This one here, it is just... Look, it's like just tasting an unbelievably good um, candy bar. But these are good for you. These are protein bars. But they, they don't taste like cement. They don't taste like dirt. They don't taste like sawdust. New flavor. Coconut brownie chunk built bar. Get it. India, it's a limited time flavor. Get it today. Go to builtbar.com and use the promo code locked on and get yourself some of this new flavor, coconut brownie chunk. All right, let's go on to the last game of the night. The Portland Trailblazers beat the Sixers again 118 114. Ben Simmons was great in this game 23 11 and 9, a steal and a block. 83% from the field, 100% from the line as well. Just a great game. While well, Embiid had 35 and 9 with two blocks. And when you see those performances, you go, how the hell do they lose? Um, and it's a good question. Toby Harris, the thick hogsman, he was all right. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. 17, 6, and 5 with a block, but some pretty bad shooting. 9 of 9 from the line is good for Harris. Well, Seth Curry, the clutch three at the end to tie it up, but of course the Blazers pull away in the end. 15 points in 35 minutes for Seth with three threes. I think he's more of a streamer, uh, a three-point specialist. He's unbelievable. He hasn't missed a free throw all year. He's elite at shooting threes, um, but I'm not sure what else he's doing, and that limits his overall value. Dan Green struggled, but he had two steals. 
And then Tyrese Maxey replaced Shake Milton, played 13 minutes and had five points, and he'll be back out of the rotation real soon. Matisse Thibel, who we know is a defensive streamer, he had his two steals. That's just what he does. Um, for the Blazers, Lillard, 30 points, 7 assists, 4 triples, 29% shooting is pretty troublesome, but 14 from uh, 15 from the line is really great, while Gaz Trent had a pretty good shooting night. Empty otherwise, but 19 points, 5 threes, 4 rebounds, 0 assists, and a steal, 58% shooting. He remains a must-roster guy while all the injuries are happening. Mallow was great. 26 minutes for Kamalo Anthony, 24 points, including some clutch free throws, 60% shooting. Now, it's very empty apart from that, just 2 rebounds. He is a points streamer, and that is it. He is just a deeper league guy, and he is rostered in far too many 12-team leagues. Cantor had a laceration, had to go to the locker room, but returned, played 32 minutes, had 10 and 14. He holds up all right against Embiid. While Covington, who'd been playing well, did not play particularly well. He had a triple one, but only five points and only took five shots. But it's those defensive stats, which is keeping him above water. Derek Jones is just not good. Nine points in 23 minutes with two threes, while Simons played 23 minutes as well. He's really playing at a significantly higher level than what he was earlier this season. And um, what he was last year. Uh, 11 points here for Simons. Only still a deeper league player though. Nothing too much more than that. Let's now move across. Let's have a look at the top ads and drops in the last 24 hours. Josh the Hitman Hart up almost 15%. I don't agree with that as a must-roster 12-team league type guy, more of a 14-teamer. Camelo Anthony up 13%. I assume that's just for today's streaming, and that's it. Doug McDirt up 12%, again, just for today. Bryn Forbes up 11%. Those people are going to be bitterly disappointed. Forbes is fine. Stream him, add him, that's fine. But you're adding him for an 11-game Friday. He's not going to be in your best 10 players. I think you've just wasted that ad personally. Well, Lou Williams is up 11%. He is getting a really high usage rate with Paul George out, and that is providing some value short-term there for Lou Williams. Top drops, Jeff Green down 11%. Yeah, he's a 12-team drop. Emmanuel quickly down 7%. He probably is a drop, but I wouldn't necessarily be that quick on the trigger. I think he is a drop, though. Vanderbilt down 7%. He's a drop. Cole Anthony down 6%. That's wild. I wouldn't be dropping him. And DeAnthony Melton down 5%. Yeah, really hard at the moment. It's hard to see the complete upside with the minutes anyway. And now he's hurt. It is hard to hold on to him in that scenario. The monstrous line of the night is Steph Curry. 40 points, 10 threes, 8 rebounds. I talked about him before, but honestly, he's just been ridiculously good again this season. Um, just It's unfair that we just got robbed of a whole year of Steph last year, but he is at an absolute elite level MVP type candidate numbers from Steph Curry. Fantasy goodness as well. The number three ranked player averaging 35 and a half and six with five threes on a true shooting of 66%. It's actually ridiculous. And then we look at the um, rookie of the night, and it is Isaiah Stewart in his first start. 17 points, 7 rebounds, 2 steals, and a block. I talked about him at length before. I think there's a chance that maybe there's a minute split coming. I think there's a chance of another start for him on Friday. And I'm intrigued to see where it goes for Isaiah Stewart. Let's look at the top 10 under 50. Top 10 players performing on Thursday who are rostered in under 50% of our advanced league metrics. Number one is Shemi Ojale. Started, shot well, don't buy into it, not a 12-team league ad. James Ennis at number two. Yeah, played pretty well. And with all the injuries, he does have 12-team stream value. And Peyton Pritchard, excellent stream for Friday. He's the number three player on this list. Kemba Walker's going to be out. Pritchard is the backup point guard who will likely move into the starting point guard role. And he's playing at a pretty high level. Number four is Isaiah Stewart. Talked about him multiple times already. Solid enough ad. Five is the Baconator, Dwayne Bacon. I don't know what the hell his role is when everyone's healthy, but they're very, very far away from everyone being healthy. So he's a deeper league type stream. Six is Max Struess, who was great, but don't rely on that. Seven is Jay Sean Tate. He should be a 12-team league guy. Eight is Carmelo Anthony, a 14-team league player. Nine is Truma Akiki who, again, I think is really interesting. A nice 14-team league stream option at this point. And number 10, Stan Johnson. I reckon we can just uh, go ahead and ignore that one. So let's move on to talk about Friday's games. There are 11 of them. Let's talk about some things we need to be aware of. 11 games on Friday. So let's take a look at what we need to know. D'Angelo Russell's out for the Timberwolves. That's the first game, the Wolves and the Hornets. Russell is out, while Devontae Graham is questionable for that one. Um, Towns, of course, is back for Minnesota. The Knicks and the Wizards, Bradley Beal is out resting. So who the hell knows what they're going to do at shooting guard. Their backup shooting guard position in, involves a lot of point guards who can't shoot. Is Smith and Hal Neto? Or is it Garrison Matthews? Or is it Troy Brown? Or is it an out of position Denny Avdia? A lot of question marks there. The Pistons and the Celtics, um, back-to-back for both teams. 
Kemba Walker won't play. Blake Griffin won't play. We don't know if Mason Plumley will play. I would assume he won't. He didn't play on Thursday with an elbow infection. So some big opportunities in that game. Massive, massive value, I think, in that game for DFS. The Spurs and the Hawks. The Hawks are one and a half point favorites here, of course. There's no DeAndre Hunter. The Spurs will get Derek White back after resting last game. Let's see how, see how he does in that one. The um, Pelicans and the Mavericks. The Mavericks are three point favorites and the total is 233 and a half. No major injury concerns or questionable tags that we need to pay attention to in that one. The Clippers and the Bulls, no Paul George, of course, while Wendell Carter Jr. has been upgraded to doubtful. So he won't play, but his return is very, very soon, it looks like. The Thunder and the Nuggets, no Gildas Alexander, no George Hill, no Theo Maladon. For the Thunder, uh, well, the Nuggets are going to be without Gary Harris. Nice, Gary! And PJ Dozier, so you're going to get a lot of Hamadou Diallo, a lot of Kenrich Williams, a lot of Justin Jackson. You've got Isaiah Roby, who's questionable as well. Then you're going to get some RJ Hampton. You're going to get some Michael Porter Jr. starting as well for the Nuggets. The Bucks and the Jazz, no Mike Conley, no Drew Holiday. So Joe Ingles is into the starting lineup. Bryn Forbes is into the starting lineup in Milwaukee. The Cavs and the Blazers. The Blazers are on a back-to-back here, while the Cavs um, don't think we're going to have Kevin Love returning in this one. The Grizzlies and the Lakers. The Grizzlies are without everyone still. No Winslow, no Melton, no Jaron Jackson, no Brandon Clark, and now no Desmond Bain. So watch for Grace and Allen to get a start. The Lakers still listing Anthony Davis as questionable, so he could miss another one. So Kyle Kuzma is the guy to pay attention to there. And then the Magic and the Kings. Who the hell knows what's going on with the Magic? They had no Cole Anthony, no Yvonne Fournier, no Michael Carter-Williams on Thursday. So Frank Mason started a point guard, then he strained his groin and didn't return. So could be we be in a situation where Dwayne Bacon is the starting point guard? There are just so many injuries with this Orlando team. Now, maybe Fournier or Anthony or Carter-Williams or even Mason are ready to play, but there are a ton of question marks with that Magic squad heading into Friday's action. In terms of value at this point for uh, DFS, I like uh, on FanDuel, I like Davis Bertans, Derek White, Peyton Pritchard, I love for the Celtics. I like Jordan Clarkson, Dinla Gallinari, Joe Ingles, Russell Westbrook, Denzel the Hammer Valentine, as well as Garrett Temple, Michael Porter, Al Horford, Lamelo Ball, um, Jason Tatum, Dylan Brooks, and De'Aaron Fox. They're probably my best options there over on Fangio at this early stage. Guys, it's been another great week. I'll be on the week there here on the weekend with a top 20 show. I'll have my what to watch for. I'll have weekly previews as well, but no recaps after Friday's games, no recaps after Saturday's games. Be aware of that. Without fail, there'll be a comment every week. Where's the recap? It doesn't happen on Fridays or Saturdays. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.